Hi, and welcome back. We're taking a look at a FreeNAS system expansion project that I've been working on for the past few months now. In the previous video, we went over the data connection between the main chassis, or the head unit, and the expansion shelf, or simply shelf, via an external mini SAS HD cable. We also covered synchronizing power supply states between the two chassis by bridging the PS on pin on each unit's 24 pin ATX connector. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'd encourage you to watch it before you watch this one. There's a link to it in the video description below. In this video, we're going to take a look at independently cooling each chassis by controlling the fans based on the temperatures of only the discs in that chassis. Of course, I also need a solution that can scale beyond a single expansion shelf when the time comes for that. As I mentioned in the last video, this ended up being the most challenging part of the system expansion project and required a major overhaul of the fan control software that I use. The fan control script I've been using was created by Stux on the FreeNAS form, and there's a link to that in the video description. I've also of course modified my Supermicro 846 chassis for quieter cooling. You can find details on that in my previous videos, also linked below. I performed the same modifications on the expansion shelf as I did on the chassis most notably by replacing the center fan wall and adding a fan bezel to the front of the system. The major issue I faced here is that while my motherboard supports two fan zones, I'm already using both of them. One for the CPU and one for the discs. If I just ran a long PWM fan cable from the main chassis to the shelf, the fans in the shelf would have to run at the same speed as those in the head unit, and obviously that's not ideal. I naturally wanted to be able to control the speed of the fans in each chassis, based on the drive temperatures in that chassis. After some research and brainstorming, I decided to use an Arduino microcontroller to generate the extra PWM signal to control the fans in the expansion shell. PWM stands for pulse width modulation, which is a very common method for controlling the speed of DC motors. With PWM controlled computer fans, the PWM signal is a five volt square wave running at 25 kilohertz. The fan motor runs at a speed proportional to the duty cycle of this square wave, or the percentage of time in one wavelength that the signal is high, or at 5 volts. If the wave is at 5 volts for 75% of the wavelength, and at 0 volts for the other 25%, that's a 75% duty cycle, and the fans will run at about 3 quarters speed. If the signal is 5 volts the whole time, that's a 100% duty cycle, and the fans will run at full speed. In any case, if I wanted to scale beyond a single shelf, I could have one Arduino Micro per shelf, each generating its own PWM signal. I could send commands to each Arduino over a serial connection with the FreeNAS unit to control the PWM duty cycle. I also decided to configure the fans to ramp up and down gradually so that the duty cycle transitions weren't as distracting in my office. Learning to program Arduinos was certainly a bit challenging, but I was able to push through with the help of various communities, including Reddit and my local makerspace experts. There were some minor hurdles I had to overcome, like making sure I knew which Arduino was in which chassis, but I won't go into details here. If you're interested in those details, I have a lot more information on my website linked below. As I mentioned earlier, I had to do some major modifications to the Perl-based script from Stux on the FreeNAS forms. I'm not great with Perl, so the first thing I did was port everything to Python. From there, I could more easily add in the functionality I needed for more fan zones. I added all the serial numbers for all my drives into the Python fan control script, along with an identifier that told the script which shelf each drive belonged to. The script loops through all the disk device nodes and runs smart CTL on each disk, finds the serial number from that output, and then matches the serial number to the identifiers I programmed in to know which shelf each disk is installed in. It then determines the max temperature of the disks in each shelf, again from SmartCTL, and sends out the fan control commands accordingly. I wrote the updates such that the script could support an arbitrary number of shelves. The number of shelves is simply defined in a variable at the top of the script, and then everything just loops that number of times. I also made it so the fan speed to temperature curve could have an arbitrary number of points on it. The script runs through a list of temperatures, finds the closest match, then simply picks the corresponding duty cycle. I tested the script with 30 different points on the CPU fan speed curve and it worked just fine. Once I had the Arduinos programmed and the fan control script modified, I had basic multi-zone fan control in place and things were working fairly well. 
However, I knew the Arduinos had a lot of potential that I wasn't taking advantage of, so I decided to expand the scope of the project a bit. I wanted to add a little display that I could mount on the outside of each chassis to show some statistics about the system. The Arduino displays are pretty tiny, so I couldn't display too much information. I ended up using 1 inch I2C OLED displays with a 128 by 64 resolution. I set the Arduino to display the duty cycle of the fans, the current fan speed, the temperature of all the drives in that chassis, and the ambient temperature inside of the chassis, which was measured via a temperature probe attached to the Arduino. I had the displays connected to the Arduino via cables that ran through the same side vent holes I used to run the front fan PWM cables. I 3D printed little mount for the displays and attached them with Velcro tape to the top of the front of each fan shroud. This worked fairly well, but the display was so small that the text was almost impossible to read unless you were right up in front of it. I also had issues with one of the displays where the text would wrap around to the bottom of the display every so often, likely due to RF interference or clock skew or something along those lines. I never did end up figuring out what was causing it. I ran this setup for a week or so and pretty quickly came across some major issues. The Arduinos would freeze up every so often and I would have to reset them manually by power cycling them. When they locked up, the tiny OLED displays and, more importantly, the fan's duty cycles wouldn't update. The first time this happened, I didn't catch it until the drives were really hot, some of them close to 50 degrees Celsius. To make it so I didn't have to keep manually power cycling the Arduinos, I added an automatic reset function to the fan control script. Again, you can find more details on my site, but suffice it to say that the Arduinos ended up resetting themselves five or six times per day. When the Arduinos did reset, the fans would all suddenly ramp up to 100% and stay there for about 60 seconds until they got the next duty cycle command from the fan control script. Obviously, this was pretty annoying and frustrating. So after sitting in a room with fans that would randomly ramp up to 3000 RPM and then slowly spin themselves back down, I got so frustrated that I decided to scrap the whole Arduino approach and re-implement everything on Raspberry Pis. Of course, the Pi is massive overkill for a project like this, but I wanted something more reliable than the serial connection on the Arduino. I probably could have gotten things working much more reliably on the Arduinos by doing some more troubleshooting, but I was way too frustrated with them at that point. And I was also intrigued by the enhanced capabilities of moving all the communications to Ethernet. I could get rid of the stupid little I2C displays and instead set up a simple web server to display all the system vitals. I could have everything displayed on a much larger but still fairly small screen with much more information and I could also of course access the web server from any other device I wanted. I started by porting the Arduino C code to Python to run on the Raspberry Pis, which would let them generate the necessary PWM signal to control the fans, as well as measure the fan speed and ambient temperature inside the chassis. Instead of receiving commands via serial, the Pis are connected via Ethernet and use Python's socket module to receive commands from the FreeNAS system. And instead of displaying the system statistics on attached I2C panels, the script sends all the data to another Raspberry Pi running Flask, Socket.io, and Redis, which formats and displays everything on a live web page. I have the web page displayed on a dedicated 1080p 11-inch touchscreen that I got from a Chinese retailer, which is what you're looking at now. The fan speed, duty cycle, and ambient temperature information is sent by the two Raspberry Pi fan controllers, while the FreeNAS system itself sends the individual drive temperatures to the display controller Pi, also via Python sockets. With the increased resolution of the 11-inch display, I can also show some extra information, like the FreeNAS system's CPU temperature, the CPU cooler's fan speed and duty cycle, and the average CPU load. The whole system has been running on the Raspberry Pi setup for several months now and has been pretty much rock solid. The scripts are all set up to gracefully handle socket disconnection and continue running while attempting to reconnect. There are a few other modifications and improvements I have planned, including better threading on the fan controller Pis, more robust socket reconnection logic between all parts of the system, buttons on the display web page to control fan variables like ramp speed and duty cycle mappings, the Raspberry Pi's vitals, and some additional statistics from the FreeNAS system like pool capacity. I'd also like to have it display data from other systems in my lab, like my primary workstation and my Proxmox host. The source code for everything is still in a pretty rough state, and it's obviously very specific to my setup, but I do have everything in a GitHub repository and a link below if you're curious to look through it.
Once the new shelf was in and working, I added 16 new 8 terabyte drives to the system, so the usable storage capacity has increased from about 100 terabytes to about 180 terabytes, and I still have room in the shelf for another 8 drives. I also added more RAM to the system, which now totals 128 gigabytes, and got that Octane 900P drive that I mentioned before to use as an L2 ARC. And finally, I added cable management arms to all the chassis. For some reason, Supermicro doesn't make arms for the 846, but their 2U4U arms worked after doing a little bit of cutting on one of the included brackets. If people are interested, I can put some details on the modification process on my site. Just let me know. With the additional fans, the noise level in my office has definitely gone up a little bit, but I've found that the fans in the expansion shelf are almost always at 25-30%, to 30%, or like 800-1000 to 1000 RPM. I do still plan on finding a spot outside of my office for the rack, but that's at least several years off. For now, this is about what it sounds like in my office at about 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or 22 Celsius. That was with the microphone about 3 feet from the front of the rack. As in previous videos, relative noise is pretty tough to convey through recording, but to help with that, this audio was recorded with the server in the background, and me also sitting about 3 feet in front of the mic. With the additional VDEVs in my FreeNAS system, performance has also increased. I'm able to get about a gigabyte per second sequential reads and writes between the FreeNAS system and my workstation, but I am interested in getting some 40 gig cards off of eBay to see how much faster the system can actually run. Note that if you undertake a similar expansion, you may want to manually rebalance your VDEVs by moving all of your data into another temporary data set, then moving it all back into the primary data set. This ensures that the data is evenly distributed across all the VDEVs and reads and writes can be equally divided between all the drives. Looking back at this project, I definitely took a more difficult route to achieve storage expansion, but I had a lot of fun planning, developing, and implementing everything. The fan control was obviously the biggest hurdle, and could have been avoided completely if I had this system in a room where noise wasn't an issue, just by letting the fans run at full speed. If you don't have to worry about fan control, FreeNAS expansion is really pretty simple. Enterprise storage systems like TrueNAS use more advanced expansion shells with an integrated baseboard management controller, or BMC, often with its own web UI, and fan control based around temperature sensors placed around the inside of the chassis. The shelf doesn't have access to the drive's internal temperature though, so the fan control isn't quite as tight as in my setup. That being said, these enterprise storage systems are scaled up in the exact same way that we just covered, sometimes to tens of petabytes. For maximum density, they often use top-loading expansion shelves, sometimes with over 100 drive bays in a single 4U chassis. On the opposite end of the spectrum, it would be easy enough for a home lab user to buy a second mid-tower case, stuff it full of drives, rig the PSUs together, and connect the expansion tower with an external SAS cable. If you've stuck with me for this long, I really do appreciate you watching, and I hope that you found these videos informative. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments about this setup, and stay tuned for additional videos in the future. Thanks again.